I've watched it on YouTube. I am a YouTube certified mechanic. So just remember that. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the Silly Channel. What have I done? Remember the other week I was showing you all the mud and everything? Well, check this out. I got a bunch of rock. Still got a little bit more rock and then I got to level it all, but I got rock all the way from the road, all the way to the shop. All this here is already good, but that mud hole, I covered that thing up, got it full of rock and got to finish leveling it out, but never mind all that. What are we doing today? Let's go take a look in here. I have been working on the little the 85 T-top. My next project, I've been snatching pieces off of the convertible back there. Uh, cow was busted on that one, so I got that, got hood latch, few other pieces. But today, we are going to be changing the input shaft. Finally got it in. But this is a T5 out of a 1994 5.0 V8. I ran the tag number, which is right here. And there's a decoder on there. It tells you, I think it was a number 219, which says it was a 94 V8 car, which is slightly better than a V6. The reason I'm changing it, I have to change out the bell housing and transmission total are 11 sixteenths of an inch longer than the standard Fox body T5s. So this is 11 sixteenths, three quarters. Let's call it three quarters just to make it easier to remember. And the input shaft is also longer by three quarters. So what I did was I ordered this bad boy. That's gonna go in there. All right, first thing we're gonna do is pop them four bolts out right there. All right, I have got a 13 millimeter is what these four. These four bolts here are. Tap. Right here they say you want to pull this thing out downward because there are 16 needle bearings here they are in my little magnetic holder that are inside of this that we do not want to fall down in the transmission. So I'm going to get yellow fox body boy to quit playing with the cat and come help me. All right, I got my son going to help me because when I pull this out, I don't want all these needle bearings falling. So we're going to stand it up on the end right here. And you just hold on to the top right there. Do not let it fall off. All right, that came out first. All right, there it is. I got all, got it out. Okay, you can put it down. Uh, very good. Yeah, this is in here facing like this because there are two notches inside the transmission, I see. And then in there, you can see the, the needle bearings that are in there. Small washer right there that's on top of those needle bearings that keeps them from coming out. Yep, you can see those... Uh, There's needle bearings right there. They're just in there with a light bit of lube to get them to stick to the sides. They sent 16 with a new one. I guess they planned on me losing one. <laughs> There's your difference. See the difference in the height? If you if you think you got that much room to dry shaft, you don't have to change all this. You don't have to go find a bell housing. Like I said, I've got a bell housing under the car. And there's the uh, input shaft. You don't have to change this out if you go that route. But if you want the shifter in the correct place, you're gonna have to get the shorter shaft and the shorter bell housing. All right, now I've shoved a little rag in there because I'm gonna be cleaning this extra black. Um, seal it off, it'll almost come off by hand. So I shoved a rag in there to keep it from falling into the transmission. This um, little retainer gear here came out and inside there, there's three notches. One, two, three. Guessing they're evenly spaced. I'll find out by trying to stick this in. Get it lined up on those three. All right, I am back from my buddy's shop and I pressed that um, bearing there. Cylindrical bearing onto there. It has the exact same gap differences as that one. So everything looks good. And I think we can put this in. No, I got to put the needle bearings in, so. I'm going to put a little bit of grease, take a dab of grease and line the inside of the shaft here and um, then put the needle bearings all the way around, put them in place. I'm going to line it around 
maybe there's enough there to hold those uh, containers, needle bearings. Fun to do without a, I'm going to do it with the hand that don't have the glove on. One. Two. I skipped ahead for you. There's 13. The new kit came with 16, even though the old piece had 15. And there's only room for 15. Putting the last one in now. There's all 15 in there. I didn't lose one, so I've still got a spare one if need be. With all those 15 in place, I'm going to put a little bit more grease right on top on both sides right there to hold this little ring in. That's on top. They say the hardest part of all this is getting this around there. This has got to go back in and the um, outside retaining washer that goes there it goes right on that and then there's another one because there's already one in there like this already on there so you basically sandwich two of these with that little round disc race so I'm putting that there they talk like it is a nightmare to try and get lined up but you can see there's a groove right here um, I'm gonna put that 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 clears that little gear right there so we're gonna try this and, and hope hope it works the first try. We'll see if we can get it in. Let me get my groove in the right place. Now the only thing is, I've got to get out this seal. See that seal there? The new, um, this new retainer shaft did not come with that seal. So I've either got to get that one out or order one to slip down in there. I've already put the, um, the cone-shaped race bearing and there is a shim. Make sure you put that shim in behind there or this thing's gonna get a lot of, a lot of back and forth play. I know the video I was watching, this guy, his name is and he's a YouTuber too. You can look this up. I will put a link down in the description. Matt Culpepper. I'm gonna put a link down here to his video because uh, he did. That's where. That's who I watched to do mine, and it, it, it was skittish. I was trying to remember where everything went. It was kind of scary. Um, I'm gonna do a test fit right here and see what I get. He did say the. You got a big notch and a small notch, and that is a determining factor. I think the big notch is on the bottom. But I'm not going to put it all together yet. I'm just doing a test fit. And everything looks and feels like it's going to work good. So, so yeah, i got to get that seal out. Because if I don't get the seal out, the fluid fluid does get around here, transmission fluid. It's going to end up running and coming out right here. And, and you're going to lose all your fluid and then you're going to lose the transmission. So I've either got to order that seal or get this one out and put it into the new housing. And I'll be done and I'll be happy. All right, so I ordered this from um, the input shaft that I'm doing from Transparts Warehouse. And what happened was they shipped me everything but the actual input shaft on the first try. I emailed them, said, hey, you know, no input shaft. So they sent it out the next day. I'm looking because the little seal, that black rubber seal right in there, that is part number 100254 or 12363 through Transport Warehouse. Here's the new one. They sent all this. That seal is not in this kit. I've looked everywhere. It's not in it. So, if you want to order from them, just beware. I ain't, I'm not going to put them down. I mean, they, their, their customer service was very nice. I said, look, you left out a piece. No big deal. Um, I'm going to see if a local auto parts store has that seal. If they do, I put it together. All right, I managed to get that seal out of there. And uh, I did it with a trampoline screwdriver. See my screwdriver there? I managed to get it in back behind it and just kind of tap and work my way around. Pulled it out. Doesn't look like I damaged it. Press it in with your thumb. Ties it to go. 
Now we should have a nice seal. Don't forget to put the shim there. Race bearing. And we're going to pause the camera while I... Sometimes that thing don't want to get there we go. And that's supposed to sit flush right there. And it does. See the slot there above that race? Small, big, big goes on the bottom. Slide that thing on gently. Let it seat in there. Got your four bolts that hold it on. Okay, here's something I'm learning. Um, whenever I get the housing on and get it torqued down to my 15 pounds with these, the um, I can't turn the shaft by hand, so it's too tight. So this is actually, the race bearing is pushing that too tight. So I'm gonna have to go with a thinner shim, that inner shim there, I'm trying to get it, there it is. I'm gonna put a thinner one in there than that one and uh, see what I get there. All right, I just put the um, smaller shim. I didn't go all the way down. I went about third from the smallest. I don't have a micrometer, so I don't know what the actual thickness is. And I don't see it wrote on any of them, stamped anywhere. So that retainer spacer, you know what I'm talking about by now, was too thick from the old one. So I went down about three sizes and got one in there. And now I've got enough play. I can turn it by hand, but there's not any running back and forth. So 15 pounds of torque on those, we're done. Okay, there's the finished product right there. It is now three quarters of an inch shorter here, or actually 11 sixteenths or 0.72, something like that. I think is what the actual thing is. This is shorter, that's shorter. Should slip right into the factory clutch. We're going to put it in the car. We're going to see if it works or not. That was a little iffy. That was a scary job for me. Um, I get skittish about transmission, so hopefully I don't burn it up. Anyway, I appreciate everybody for watching. God bless you all. Peace.